Welcome to That Comic Smell Podcast. First off, first off, first off, I just want to give thanks, want to give thanks for life in general, for life in With your host, David Robertson, Fernando Pons, Giuseppe Labertino. Mike Sadakat and Tom Stewart. Yeah, I've crawled, walked and ran through life bolder, colder, massive weight on my shoulders. I'm older, but I'm still growing each day, need closure. So I still lay down and pray, give thanks. Not for the money in the bank, more so. Grateful for the gas in the tank, I know. But at the same time, I don't. I show, but at the same time, I won't. It's beginning to grow. I'm not getting my hands out, I'm worried the dogs will eat it. Right. Take it, this one's attention. Yeah, yeah. Stay it off, So it's not just me? No, anybody that comes in the house, you send me on. I've got no to give you. I have washed my hands. They're no, it's like. There's food here, let's see. Good to see you. 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 Good to see doesn't really paint, uh, <laughs> paint people from uh, the Middle East in good light. Oh, right. No. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull it on with it. I'm going to be messed up if it's not the other one. Hey, you want a knife? Okay, I might be asleep before then. Uh, uh, you, uh, hey. you want a fork just to dig in it? Jesus, oh God, my goodness, Tom. Mm. I love cheesecake. No, I do like it too, but... Oh. Is there ch- actually cheese in it? Cheese, sometimes. Yeah. 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 Depends on the quality, doesn't it? Right. We make it off yeah. with soft cheese. Soft Ingredients. Cheese. Soft cheese. Right. Yeah. What kind of percentage? 80%. Oh, all right. It's like an alcohol percentage. So it's like less than <laughs> less than a fifth of it, but so basically the whole cake is caught named after that. If yeah. you if you mean Would it have been more cheese originally in the oh. in a Probably in a homemade one, if you put more yeah. than it. If you make it home, homemade, homemade, you can put that. Yeah. You want to put? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. always. Oh, it's one of them things, isn't it? So I, I just associate cheese with being a salty, mm-hmm. a salty savoury thing. Mm-hmm. But what makes the sweet and the salt? But yeah, yeah, I mean, then you have Hagen Dazs, that salted caramel stuff. Oh, they yeah. do. Mm-hmm. And you Jesus have that salted Christ. caramel cheesecake. Yeah, oh, it, and that works. And that mm. works, yes. It's strangely not. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and you got oh. It worked too well. Oh, it's I, worked itself. My wife, my, my wife, bought me uh, a slice of Ferrero Rocher cheesecake. Oh, that sounds good. I'm spoiling you. Yeah. I've never even heard of a Ferrero oh. Rocher cheesecake. Yeah, that's lovely. Should I get that from that bakery place in Bright Ferry? Perhaps she, uh, she bought it or was it some. You know about shops. I don't know if it was in. Yeah, in, right. the, in the coffee yeah. shop in, <laughs> in Caresti or in Bruxelles, which ones? Alright, okay. Oh, wait, actually, they made their own cheesecakes. It might be in the same place that. They made their own cheesecakes and one of them is. They do also. <laughs> know, <laughs> crunchy, <laughs> crunchy cheesecake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the so cheesecake as in, like, as, in the, as in the crunchy yeah. chocolate bar. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's and I, fucking nice. And then, you know the... <laughs> my missus would do something. You, got, you know the caramelised really biscuits, the lotus caramelised biscuits? Uh, uh, they're very fine. Do you want to play? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> caramelised biscuits. Maybe, maybe a few. Coming out <laughs> red and yeah. white. Rather good dish. Mike Slaver and all of it. You don't Biscoff. Mean, you don't mean like... Ginger biscuits, like you they have. Look like they look like that. They look like that, but they are, but they are made from it's caramel. Yeah, flavor. And you get oh, the biscuit. You get them from maybe, London yeah. coffee. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, I had a cheesecake of that. Fuck. 
That was the best cheesecake I ever had. That was, was that? Like amazing. Like, that I had it last year. Oh, thank My you. wife bought it. Anybody uh, else? There's a company that cheesecake. Yeah. Uh, not for me, thank you. Just now, the cheesecake factory, and oh. they do cheesecakes, and you can order one or slices or. And they were in the overgate, so she bought a bigger slice of it. Nice. Was that a cheesecake factory? Sounds amazing. I didn't know that. They had like a stand. Yeah. Oh, they had a stand. Oh, right. Okay. But I think that was just a kind of... Yeah. They are there occasionally, not all the time. The place I was thinking of, remember the marble slab place that was up at the the top of the overgate? It's now where the Chinese is at the top. Mm -hmm. It was a marble slab, like ice cream case. I thought it was that. So yeah, that's amazing. You want a spoon or anything? You just hand it. It's good answer, but it's fitness follower. Quite oh, really dexterous. Oh, oh, look at that. There's plenty more. I'll just hand it. Oh, yeah. Si, por favor. <laughs> Mas, por favor. Is that how Oliver Twist will be translated? Mas, senor, por favor. <laughs> oh, what? Thank you. Um, I don't know why, but the word desarrollo came into my head as I was getting out of the car tonight. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Development. Development. Hmm. It wasn't in Raptors, but I was trying to remember words that I had to look up from Raptors and I couldn't remember any, and then desarrollo came into my head and I was like, yeah. oh, Development. Then no one knows. <clears throat> Development. That was cheese. Mm -hmm. Nice. I had some just now. I just had my dinner. Mm -hmm. I did too, so it's mm. dessert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was at work, I had my dinner, then I had some biscuits. And then, <laughs> well, I was killing time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> So and now he comes with the cheesecake. So to Nando, remind me before you go, if I um, get you all to just record your names again, but on my phone. Oh. Just so it's all the same, like, recording. So the way it is just now, it's all up and down. And, and stuff like that, so. <laughs> so doing a new one. Do new yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had yeah. them before? No. no. Nice. Nice. They're like, they're like crap. They, they look. Oh, yeah. Ah. Ah. Really working that way just now. Well, oh, there's really a podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. Going for it. It's all on the. Getting good. It's like crap. I know. Took the call. Wow. You see, Bob said he wanted to go on. Bob oh, Turner. Probably they fry it with the fat mm -hmm. from the steak or mm -hmm. what? Because it's. Mm -hmm. Good. good oh my god. The dogs can smell that you've opened the roasters. Yeah. That was me washing my hands and the dogs picked up on it. Fucking hell, that's nice, that's nice. Yeah, I, don't know. Oh, I know there is, and I've contemplated it. Look, it's even pre cut for you. Nah, I'm okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe if there's any left. Pace yourself. Pace uh, mm. yourself, yes. Yeah. Yeah. United Jam. United Jam. Oh, it's fucking lovely though, isn't it? Yeah, enjoyed the artwork. Looks lovely in that uh, in that Raptors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was my friend Tony, um, Tony. Uh, from Menorca. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> um, years ago, one of the times I used I visited my parents and I because I always go and see him and have that with chat and we meet and I said, oh, look, this is what's coming out. This Raptors and his pain came out. And I thought, oh, this is amazing. This is amazing stuff. And he got a couple of the, I think it was the first two books at that time he had. And then he went to, I think it was the Barcelona comic convention. And the artist was there. Um, so he got the book dedicated with a sketch and everything. Um, what did he have in Barcelona? I never went. So he, yeah, he was, he was delighted. And I said, yeah, you need to get that, Raptors. And then the next thing he, he got it. And now he's doing this one as well. Which is the Scorpion, which is published in the UK by Cinebook. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's really, really good. It's the same app. Have you been. Uh, I got the Scorpion, right. I got the whole so the collection so far. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really, really good. 
So there yeah. was a bit of love in that wrapped as well. Then. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a bit of love in a funny kind of way, but that uh, the, the Italian cop, he well, the Italian nerd cop, Spiaggi, he has a bit of love for the lead, didn't he? But it wasn't reciprocated. No. Well, sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as they did. Yeah. And I would call them, those cold comics are sexy. sexy. Yeah. We're not going into any details. Yeah, so yeah. Sexy, that's it. They were, they were sexy without the shacking. They were. I don't know about that anymore. Well, now they have some of their own. Alright, so they're looking after themselves for the night. So, love. Oh, love. What's love got I to think do you need it? to. We need love. Mm-hmm. Dom, you need to start this one. Because oh, okay. you have a mm-hmm. tremendous selection there. Of love. Mm. Um, I'm going to start off one that I read quite recently, which was. Uh, Modern Slorns by Neil Slorns, Tort and Tinder, in which he actually talks about trying to find love on Tinder. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And oh, that's okay. kind of the running the running theme throughout it. So he's got a kind of collection of uh, other things about his tortoise and all his <laughs> pals and stuff like that going throughout it. But there's also a whole part where he's talking about Tinder tales, talking about meeting up with people and how the dates go and whatnot, and how he gets on with Tinder. Well, that's part two, I think. But just all these different experiences that he has on it. Um, and these real experiences. Relevant and up to date. Yeah, very up to date. But there is a three part that goes throughout it, where he's sort of messaging different people and going on dates with folk and he might end up with them, he might not and how does it go from there and So it's whatnot. fact, not fiction. Uh, yeah, it's more like a diary. Ah, right. a, lot of his, a lot of his comics are sort of diary comics or memories or whatever. Is there any love in it then or is it a bit cold? It's a bit... It's the search. I don't mean yeah, it's the the I don't mean the writing. I mean like well, it's, it's his strange. experience does it end up being a cold? In both in both of them, the first one, he sort of goes on a date with a girl and then finds out that she's in a polyamorous relationship, but he doesn't. You know have to that explain that. Though. She's with somebody and she's looking to be with somebody else, so being in a relationship with two people at the same with time with the consent of that other person. Yes. Yeah, All yeah. right. Um, God, in olden days, that was just an open relationship, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. What's it called now? Polyamorous. polyamorous. Oh, there's right. Polyamorous. Poly- right, right. There's polygamy <laughs> and there's polyamorous. Polygamy is a one male with many female partners. Yeah. And polyamorous is like everybody involved is going out with different folk. Um, if you want to if you want to hear about polyamorism, I was listening to the Beans podcast the other day and they did uh, a whole one on polyamorous. Well, oh, this is cool. I had, had a program last week. Mm-hmm. I think it was last week, yeah, as well. About the relationship. And they were, yeah, maybe it's called then. So they had a... Um, polyamorous relationship. Sean and David polyamorous what people. Like a, people uh, involved in polyamorous relationships. Uh, but yeah, so there's one, he, he goes on that date, he thinks he's going somewhere, and then he finds it's a polyamorous relationship, and he's sort of thinking, well, no, it's not, you know, that's not what I meant to. Yeah. Uh, and the second one, he's kind of, he goes out with her, he has a, has a good time, and it seems like he's getting into it mm-hmm. seems like she's getting into it but then it kind of ends on a note where he's sitting down and it's a few weeks later and it's her texting him saying I like you and I want to get to know you but let's be pals kind of thing so he thinks he's kind of going somewhere and then it doesn't uh, so it doesn't <clears throat> it's, uh, not, it's not it's not like, it's not the cold sting but at the same point he's yeah, not like it's, yeah. Right. he's not really too fussed Neil's stories are like they're not, they won't leave you feeling hard hit or depressed or anything. They're quite upbeat, and they've got a kind of mm. a good look to go with that as well. But it's uh, a funny style. They are. They are. Yeah, reminds me. Of the now, is this? Excuse my ignorance, but it reminds me of a uh, scribble notes, which is uh, yeah, kind of. It kind of looks like that. A bit. video game mm-hmm. kind of art design, and they've done different versions, but it reminds me of that. Yeah. So, and then uh, yeah. on Nintendo, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Game Boy or something. Uh, yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like Neil's stuff. He but does, it's, a, it's a nice stuff, yeah. yeah. He does political um, strips for 
Is it the Independent or something like that? It's something, it's something along those lines, but he does. Yeah, I've like, never seen that. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, uh, political yeah. strips and that. He just had one who was on like the front page of a paper the other day because it was a picture of Nicholas Sturgeon. <laughs> and I went past and you can spot it a mile off because it's the style. Right? Cranky with a. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the but it's, uh, it's worth it. It's worth a, it's worth a read though, definitely. Um, but like I say, there's other stories throughout it as well. Yeah. It's just that that's the main kind of one that goes throughout it. It's, a, it's mainly about him trying out Tinder for the first time. And that's so sort of trying to find love in this modern age. Okay. <coughs> yes. Well, it's nice. never been easy, has it? No. This is just a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's not honestly like. Tinder doesn't change anything. A lot of people are very put off by the idea of Tinder. Like, oh my god, it's just too much. I wouldn't want to be single in this day and age for long. But it's just another it's thing. Sure it's like better. It's just it? another thing that's sad and you, you know what I mean? If you still want to meet somebody by going out and meeting them, you'll still do it. Still meet them, won't you? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, like you'd like to think so. Yeah, it's not like all of a sudden that stops. People stop going out because Tinder exists. But I think... <laughs> I think love finds you more than you find love. Mm-hmm. It's all you, the people tend to say. It's usually when you stop looking that they end up finding love. Perhaps it's easy for someone who has found love to say, or the love has found them to say, love yeah. finds you. Yeah. It's the other way around. Maybe it's easier now, but that's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Beautiful. Scott McLeod, the sculptor. The sculptor. Uh, literally brought me to tears on the first reading. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the first books I think I can remember um, reading the very start of it with the intention of only reading the first like part and ended up reading it from cover to cover. And I, and I say that quite a lot, but this is actually probably the first one that that happened with. Um, great style. I love how, the way that it looks. How old is that? Oh, when was it done? Uh, three or four three years ago. Three or four years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so it was it was the first, first, yeah. first time I read it, it was here. Yeah, it's relatively really, yeah. really modern. Yeah. 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 Um, but really, really nice style. I like, yeah. I like Scott, yeah. Scott McLeod as an artist in general, but I think it's a really beautiful love story of a feeling sculptor and how he's just trying to get his career on track whilst also trying to maintain a relationship I don't really want to say too much on it because yeah. if you haven't read it it gives a lot away if you yeah. say a lot on it yeah I, have, I haven't read it but it's beautiful beautiful have you read it from start to no finish? I have because yeah. it's something you'd like to read that kind of thing or no I don't 50-50 on it what are you going to sell? 55? I don't read that shit anymore. No, I, I, I borrowed it from somebody and kept it for six months. Ah, I never, never opened it. I don't know why. Did you know You've it never gone to open it and read it? No. no. It's beautifully drawn. Yeah. And it's... It tackles some heavy... Very heavy yeah. Very heavy themes. It's full of emotion. Hmm. It's and he transpires through the pages. Pages like this I enjoy, like where it shows emotion mm. and intensity. It really, it really gets the situation. It, yeah. Very, very intense. Mm. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's, I should try it. It's, 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 really, it's really nice. It's a very powerful, emotional yeah. story. It's, um, it's the first time in a long time that I read something and got few pages from a certain part and started audibly saying no 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 yes. no and then turn the page and uh, you go like that uh, yeah. <clears throat> could you kind of see see what's going what's gonna happen what's gonna happen it's um yeah it's not a happy one but it is it is um it's very moving and it's a real it's an actual term of a a page turner, definitely. Mm. He sort of ends each page really well as well, that you kind of feel you have to keep going. You know what I mean? I like when people... You do, you do know how the story is going to end, 
yeah. but you don't want to end up in that way, but you know it's happening. So you have to deal with that as you're reading the story. Yeah. And then when you reach the end, you say, well, you know. Is it so it's not, on, so to me. biographical no, or no? no. So it's to me, it wasn't terribly sad, <laughs> although it was emotional. So perhaps bittersweet will be more yeah. the end that we're looking here and the world we're looking to define the end of the story. Right. We're trying really hard not to spoil it. I know. Really I mean, I, but I think we did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see, I can't, honestly, I can't see any more. Yeah. 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 I'll spoil it. I thoroughly recommend that. It's, yeah. This is a book that... Worth having. Everyone should have that book. It'll I become so. a classic. Right. It's not a classic just yet because it just came out two, three years ago. Yeah. But this is a classic. Right. A LSD. It's, the edition also is very well done and very carefully covers the art, the, the, the slip cover as well. It's, it's one of the books is worth to have in your library. I love, I love that book that much that when somebody said a bad word about it, I instantly went off on You triggered. You got triggered. Oh, oh shit. No, it was five no. minutes ago. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is this David's last, last meet-up? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. 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 You're not even lasting <laughs> the entire world. Uh, no, no, there was a, um, a, po- a, a podcast. But well, that was speaking an emotional response. Yeah. A, a personal emotional... There was about 20 minutes they had the... Um, 20 minutes they, they kind of ragged on it. And uh, yeah, I didn't have the time for it after that. Yeah. If it doesn't move you, I mean, you are made of. You're a psychopath. Who's it that puts it out again? Is it self-made, self-made hero? hero. Yeah. So the sculpture, Scott McLeod, posed by self-made hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here we go. Worth it. Worth every Absolutely. Every penny. Yes. Every penny. How many pennies is it? Oh, two thousand. Scott McLeod is actually too, too much for that. Two thousand. I, I think it's about eighteen pounds. I think it was only like ten pounds. Well, the yeah. cover price. Then. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably. Yeah. I think I was going to take Should be on Certainly the discount websites. Like, <laughs> all the websites they sell it for a cheaper price. What I've heard recently about certain discount websites I didn't know, and it's seriously put me off them. What's this? Uh, stuff like people not providing healthcare. Fair for employees, but then they want to start up a healthcare company with JP Morgan and someone else. And instead of providing air conditioning in certain workplaces, they have an ambulance waiting outside in case anyone overheats. Oh. I didn't know that until recently. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, I uh, I like the look of it. Mm. Like, I, like I can't I can't bring it up enough, but I can't say anymore because it was. Yeah. Well, I think it's <laughs> I feel if it's, That's one, good, it's right. definitely one of them if you see anything on there. Scott McLeod right. should thank you because there'll be some money coming his way <laughs> after that endorsement. I think Scott McLeod's making enough money off of uh, yeah, his well, past works. Yeah, what if he turn his nose up to another no. slice of whatever percentage he gets of that? Though. I didn't really expect much less from the guy who makes a comic book about makes comic books about making comics, to be honest. He really understands them. So much so that he's really Understanding comic books. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Next one. I was going to say, I think we're back to episodic right enough on that. Uh, Love oh, and rockets. rockets. Yes. I don't know what it is about these books. I was going through them the other day and just the entire, the themes, the look, the writing, everything just is massively appealing. I mean, we already did a whole episode on them, but they're just... They're absolutely filled with love, turmoil, uh, complete despair, but complete comedy on the other half as well. Like it's just social like, critique. Oh, everything. There's, there's, I think um, love and rockets. Sadness and love. Yeah, it's, it's, everything is there. Yeah. Love and rockets has everything. <laughs> but what was it? What was it about the the love and rockets part of it again? Did we not speak about this before? Do you mean it's is it not because, because it was slightly surreal? So at the very gone. beginning, at the very beginning of the story, and I think we mentioned that, um, well, I think that's the theory anyway, 
of my theory, the Love and Rockets, because you had part of the magazine of the comics were science fiction, science fiction no, exactly. but the other part was uh, more, the let's call it mundane stories. The stories from Power Man. Yeah, yeah. So you have the the love for the human relationships and the science fiction. Yeah. So the yeah, love yeah. and the rockets. The love and the rockets. But yeah. then the science fiction kind of has been left to a side as you as you read and you go yeah. along, and it's more about the the the, the, the relationships of the different um, characters mm-hmm. that appear in the book, yeah. which lots of them are female, strong characters, mm-hmm. which at the time yeah, very uh, much seen. 20 or oh, oh, how many years ago, 30 years, mm-hmm. uh, when they appear, that was quite a new thing suddenly, um, to have a such in-depth and uh, realistic um, characters. Um, and, uh, and it comes from the, the, the authors, that because their mom was a strong woman yeah. and, and they always had, well, you know, she brought us up in a yeah, like nearly it's... impossible, difficult background and good area. The very good female role models. So yeah. And it's in the title. Love, Love, Love and Rockets. Rockets. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and there's many books. Because it well, it, it has it came out in a magazine format, mm-hmm. then there's been compiled in different well, a new trades and books. There's a new one of these just come out. And it's all the new ones, but it's, it looks exactly like this. To try to keep the yeah, same. Yeah, they're trying to keep collection. them all the same kind of yeah. look now. Um, I think these are great. These are good, like coffee table size books. Yeah, that, that format. You've got them for a bargain oh, price. Do, do even, Unbelievable. I still shit myself every time I see that look. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, I, I want to sh- I want to show exactly. you just to go look. I got it for two ninety nine. <laughs> I, I do yeah. that for books. I get that are expensive, but I get a bargain price. I often just leave the price on as a way of showing off. Yeah. Johnny's so. <laughs> this was actually the page I was looking for. Just look at that. Yeah, it's so good. It's mm. absolutely gorgeous for black and white. Mm. Like it really is just absolutely beautiful. So what is the uh, what is it? The uh, frowny faced characters. What is he? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh God, I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. I've read that not that long ago and I honestly can't remember. I just remember it. Like, looking. <laughs> Good. I flicked through, I flicked through all three of them really, really quickly. And it's one of them when you go through it and then try to think about what happened when mm. you go, ah. There's a lot of time with Woman Rockets that, because it's so all over the place mm-hmm. and it's been going so long and you read them all up of order and 50% of the time I've no idea what's happening. Yeah. But I just <laughs> enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I got that when I, I've only read one or two and I was like, right. really, I, I enjoyed what was in there. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think you need to hold on to every detail. And no. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't, so I'm saying that. <laughs> no, I know what you mean, though. Like, definitely. Um, what's, her, what's her name? Uh, the... Oh, God, the mechanic. Oh, yeah, Maggie. 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 Um, a lot of her stories, I can't... I, I, I still yeah. totally forget what's going on. Mm-hmm. She's in them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about all I know. Every time, every time I see any of the Maggie Mechanic stuff, I get totally lost. Because she's the one that has all the, the horned guy in about them as well, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's yeah. Coetis, Rockets. Coetis. Yeah. We don't, we don't say the age. Coetis. Coetis. Amor. Amor. Love. Nice. <laughs> that was the moment. Nice. She had the moment there. <laughs> was yeah, it? it's it's definitely uh, it's one of the all time greats. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Love and love. It's, it's it's they're fan of graphics, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these are tight. Yeah. It's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, I mean, if if you made comics, right? I mean, to have made this in your life, this book, I mean, I'd be sitting going. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I've done, I've done, I've done it. I've on this one volume. Like, <laughs> Paul, thank you. Yes, I am one of the best. You know, they've done like 20 No, but they have like, other days. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. You see, that's a good chunk. Yeah. And there's like, a nine in total of these or something like that. 
Kind of thing, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Of them. Yes. Mm. Of the collective. Of the collection yes. ones. Yes. And there's a lot what? more that haven't been collected. Well, there's other stories of comics yeah. like Dan that are no right, yeah. necessarily love from Rockets. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, it's oh, from, or stories yeah. from Palomar or, or following the main character. They even, I've Maggie seen that he's, he's even doing now, like one of the characters in it is an actress. And then one of the books he's done is the story of the film she's in. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Going, this is that film she was mm-hmm. in. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was confused enough already. And, it's, <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's amazing. That's one hell of a spin off. <laughs> so, right. so the main character looks like her, you know, it's, it's very confusing. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a different good. name and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. oh, it's the film. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. It's good. That's commitment. That is therefore, that's some big commitment. It's wow. incredible though, it's, it's incredible there was, work. There was a wrestler called Little Beaver. Nice. <laughs> I'm sure there's been worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Big Beaver. Yeah. yeah. Um, my next pick. Mm. Blue is the warmest colour. Oh, Story right. of, um, I can't remember the two characters' names, but a, a loving relationship between two women. And it is, uh, it's a lot about like how their families react to them mm-hmm. getting together, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of loss and um, like per- there's a lot of like personal loss and love loss and um, a lot of like first meetings and whatnot. And um, I felt reading going through this book that I could feel a lot of the emotion that the characters were going through um, as I was reading it. Uh, so it was first this and then it became a film? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen the film? No. no. It's a French film. <clears throat> um, it's really good, but it's totally different. Completely different. So they just took the title? Yeah, just just the title. Uh, some, some of the, some of the themes... The <laughs> Right, it's the coldest yeah, it's it's color. Um, but no, <laughs> they've just the they've taken the kind of basic idea and they've taken a lot of like meetings and stuff <laughs> and put it into the films. Right. Like when oh, they first met and stuff like that. Right. And like some of the dates and stuff. But the actual, the whole running story is totally different. Completely yeah. different. Um, When's it so it it's now, how old is it? Can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I'm wondering if it was maybe... Yeah, format and... Yeah, so, I, yeah, I thought it was maybe like some sort of serial or something beforehand. Yeah, be. and then Interesting. But I didn't. I don't know. I really, really don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, Clementine and Emma. That's it. Clementine and Emma. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, it's um, if I remember rightly, it's Emma's story. No, it's Clementine's story of how she met Emma, but it's all from Emma reading. Clementine's story. So she's reading through it and hearing about how she met her and stuff oh. like that. Right, yeah, sounds interesting. Yeah. Perspective. This, uh, this, this is another one that has sort of like a heartbreaking mm. ending that I can't really say much about. Oh. It's quite a common theme. A lot of um, the love stories. Yeah, I will say. Yeah, a lot of the love stories start off all right and then when, end up in absolute devastation. Like when, there's a lot happening. I was thinking about it. Like, I was thinking about, yeah. I was thinking about it with the yeah with the love and the. We have this tendency to express and tell and recreate the pain, the sadness when it goes wrong, mm. but. Then you don't find love stories that end in a happy ending and you know and it's enjoyable and the happiness yeah, is what it should be unless and it's you a kid's story it. yeah mm. and that's happy ever after yeah and it's kind of we're assuming oh yeah the happiness you know that's great and but we concentrate in the pain not just in comics but in, in literature and yeah. in cinema mm-hmm. in, in all kind of genres that is the pain is what well, yeah. is what makes us kind of human and make oh you just that's how we can feel the love and how painful it is, you know. Uh, One of the most uh, original literature love stories, Romeo and Juliet, ends in a complete yes, tragedy. Yes, in a complete mm-hmm. tragedy drama. But so love is above everything. There are terrible panels, though, aren't there? There's a lot of 
Northern, um, Northern Nutters. But this um, this book's very. So blue is the one that's called. Yeah, blue is the one that's called. How old is that? Julie Julie Merrill. But it's really nice. Um, it's really nice sort of watercolor style to it as well. Yeah. Throughout the book, um, a nice kind of wash over all the panels and whatnot as well. Um, Deep love. I like um, I like a lot of the uh, a lot of the lettering in it as well. Because it's all like handwritten letters, yeah. written to you little. Oh yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's nice. Though, I think very nice book, isn't it? Looks nice. Yeah, big fan. What a detail! Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like crowd scenes, <laughs> all that good stuff. Have you read it as well? No, no, no. I haven't read it at all. So, what's the next one you have there? It's a bit of a guys. A bit, a bit like elves. It's very, manga very, is, yeah, very uh, manga influenced. Influenced. Yeah. Guys, yeah. I think that's uh, because they've also been influenced by Japanese manga when it comes to drawing. Maybe, yeah. More normal, mundane things happening. Possibly. Possibly. Very possibly. It is a more newer book, so it would have more of a. The eyes. The eyes. Only the eyes. Yeah. It might yeah, be more eyes, yeah. of. Um, Elf Quest. Elf Quest. Oh, okay. Pinnies. Number nine. Wendy Pinny. The way that she draws the eyes of the elves' characters. It reminds me of that. Only the eyes, I say. The rest of the proportion is different, but completely different in the style. But yeah, certainly. There was something, you know that Fanta Graphics book I've been reading? Yes. There was something in that, well, now I'm going to, I've got all the details lost in my head, but there was, there was something like, the elf, when the peenies were doing Elf Quest, Fantagraphics almost took that on as being, they were publishing that. And there was like a week in it or something, and it didn't happen, so they did Love and Rockets instead. So right. it's like, imagine the total difference of of the company. Fantagraphics would have been the Elf Quest, the guys. Yeah. There you go, alternate reality. Jeez. Elf Quest hasn't really stood up. Test of time. Oh, no, no, the other other Earth, so that's what they're doing then. I it? shouldn't say ah. that, but it's fantasy, sort of. It's like elf, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> right? You're worried about triggering. Uh, no. Oh. Triggering. Triggering. Triggering orcs. No, I think there's a, the rubber soul. someone like ElfQuest has got loads of fans, you know. Yeah. So me sitting. Yeah, that's not really helped up. It's what is it? Nice. A just role play it. again? What is no, it? it was a comic back in right. the like, 1980s or maybe late 70s. <coughs> oh yeah, it's a Marvel cool. yeah. published it for a wee bit. They picked yeah. it up. Nah. I just always remember it being in existence. I don't yeah. ever remember a yeah. time when it wasn't. I think so. it was at the time. It was, it was part of that whole self-publishing indie scene. Yeah. You know? So you yeah, can see some, the fan yeah. graphics. But at that time, it was somehow linked with the, the boom of the uh, Dungeon and Dragons and oh, role yeah. play. Yeah. 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 And it, it kind of belonged to that sort of world. Mm. There is actual Dungeons and Dragons role playing games based on it, isn't well, there? Yeah. Is it? All right. I think yeah. so, yeah. Well, there you are. Let's try it. But but be put so, off certainly game. from that point of view. But now, <sighs> yeah, I can see what they're trying to say. Perhaps it has. Lost the general appeal to everyone. Mm. It still has his fans. Yeah. And by all means, if you like that sort of world and fantasy, give it a go yeah, because cool. they are really good comics. But they are a little bit dated now, mm. to my understanding as well. But when you think of great, uh, sorry, Game of Thrones and all that, people like all that. So, yeah. so probably if you like that, maybe you would like it. Because I don't mm. like Game of Thrones either. I don't know. I think people like Game of Thrones partly because of the CGI. But anybody yeah, it does look chance, close. You know, in my usual and it is really well written. I haven't watched a the full more. episode yet. And there's more <laughs> gore and, uh, and sex stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Just say it's sex. A bit more than Elf Quest. So speaking of sex. sex. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, the story Ooh. of sex. Oh, mm. I like that. On the spine, that's mm. brilliant. That'll give it away to your kids, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Story of... <laughs> Come on, I'm all the ones to do. That one? Yeah, so yeah, do right. people Good do it? I'm reading, like news. I'm reading the newspaper on your mother's back. 
Yes, my, uh, my, my well, other, how else would you explain it? My other half very <laughs> kindly got me this for Christmas without me even knowing that it existed. So, mm. yeah. Uh, the story of sex from apes to robots. Mm. Um, and it literally just goes step by step. I don't know to read it, so it's kind of bookmarked. Um, it literally goes from the beginning of time right up to modern mm. day. Yeah. Well, let's see the apes. It, it kind of shows you... Fuck. <laughs> It, sh- it shows you um, it shows you a lot of like, lore and stuff as well, a lot to do with religion. So that there mm-hmm. is talking about um, Egypt. Is it? That's uh, I don't know how do you, how do you pronounce that? Egalitarian. 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 But before that, it was all about Ishtar and mm. um, Oh, have you come across the the? Oh, is it the festival of? Dionysus. Mm. Yeah. No, where they have the, the gorgeous. Yeah, the Greeks. Oh, they, the Greeks, Greeks had mm. a fe- they had a weird ritual yeah, where not only Bacchus, mm. that's right. well, everyone so would have to um, kind of Zeus dress up as someone there. else. Well, Zeus Zeus got his way uh, many times. Greece becomes the setting of the pantheon of the gods, legendary heroes who are still with us today. For they all become part of the canon of blah blah blah. Some of them are. Important, but it gives you a lot of like history and who sh- who did what and yeah you know there's bits that people get the knock cut off. And oh, like Kronos, I suspect. Also yes. known as Saturn. Kronos cuts off his father's enormous member. Yeah. Oh. Um, that will leave a mark. Yeah. yeah. That Saturn. will leave a mark. Yeah. The god of time. There's the apes, Mike, that you want to see. Oh so. yeah. Well, Kronos got it happened to himself as well, I believe, from Zeus. I mean, one of his testicles became Venus, or Aphrodite. That's it's a quite, fuck load, isn't it? It's quite funny when I was looking through it, it's like it's got, it's got a guy running away from a uh, saber tooth. Oh dear. Uh, and then no chance. tying it up so that it doesn't have it. And it says that's when the, the invention of the first G-string. So men had the first G-string. Well, Not yeah, because you don't, yeah, of course, it's yeah. going, oh, shh. It's all flopping. You might have got that from uh, seeing some of the people in Papua New Guinea. Um, they have uh, a little sort of like string like cords made from uh, yeah. plant vines. They wrap, wrap it up and just put it back like that and then tie it yeah. the, as I a belt. Know, so it's just sort of kept out the way. Yeah, protect it out. But their bollocks are still loose, so uh, yeah. yeah, they could still get a, a nasty. Uh, uh, brush from some of the uh, not too pleasant plants that are uh, scarred around. But, uh, um, so it's going through history, <coughs> yeah, all different mythologies, going through history, all, all, all sexes, all everything. Mm-hmm. It goes through absolutely everything: birth control, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the first the first time that anybody saw on oh. television. <laughs> oh, new <laughs> sexual <laughs> order, and then it's like the twenty first century the future sex. But it shows there, it shows like all the 21st century and then it gets into the future and what we should Uh-oh. come to expect and stuff like that. Uh-oh. Just, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-oh, <laughs> it's, new world. It's there. <laughs> it is, it's comedic as well though. A lot of the like the speech that, balls that, are just like jokes and stuff like that. So it'll give you the actual, it'll give you the, the proper history of the top and the facts at the top. Well, and then yeah. all the picture and the actual speech bubbles are just little jokes. With its style, I expect to see pictures of Tintin and Asterix there. Yeah. You would get into trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just that, that style of colouring. It kind of kind of reminds me of one of those comics. You get into trouble. I think they're French. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so they're all... Uh, Hershey's Adventures of yeah, Sexual both, Fantasy. Both, both, both French, but... It's definitely well worth a look. I'm enjoying it going through it anyway. I've only I, read that we I've seen that before. So it's either it. been here or it in the library. Was it, it was here? When I just when I just it was fine. Ah. Yeah, it sits proudly on the You could hide it though, could you? In a family though. It's funny, no. nobody ever notices it. I've, we've got on we've got on, <laughs> we've got on full show. But I think we've got that many other books there, nobody notices <laughs> the two just boning away. <laughs> nobody goes, what's this one? Yeah. I used to always happen with Roger Sabin did a book called Adam Comics and it was just about comics through the years, it wasn't anything, but everybody always went for that one to see what it was, you know, right, Adam okay. Comics, oh yeah, and then looked through it and went, mm. oh, <laughs> disappointment. It'll I'll happen when you have visitors who have loads of little influenced, easily influenced kids yeah. staying over, 
one of the kids, well, all of them will run into your room and see that book and they'll just shout to their uh, very strict authoritarian uh, parents who will go completely mental at you. There's two people <laughs> on that book. There's and they're one. naked. They're behind <laughs> each other. They and have they're dirty bombs. Bomb style. <laughs> Um, I saw yeah. them. But that is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that is, what That happens. is my picks for, for love. Mm. Well, very good. Thanks. Excellent. We, we can't talk that, I'm afraid. Sorry. We can't talk... <laughs> no. <laughs> the story of sex. Okay. No. The live, the live women. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's brilliant. Mm. Yeah. If you want it, if, like, once I've finished it, that once I've finished it, you can have a... I think you'll have a, 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 a queue of people wanting to see that one. Yeah. I didn't even, no idea existed at all. I and mean, this is just. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like a great book, yeah. Mm. Said nice that, format as well. Said nice size. She looked up like, comic books for, for people who like comics kind of thing. It was one of the first ones that came up. And I thought, I never came yeah. up on any of my bloody lists. Yeah. <laughs> first thing I go to. Oh, the. Actually, it's with you. It's the only time I've heard of it. Yeah. Or seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. And it's a it's great one. Never popped up on Amazon or anything. It's great. Crack on, son. Crack on. Oh, on. I just thought of that tonight. I thought, bollocks, I've got that. Why it's all it. Yeah. A dream in a Lovely book. Oh, what a beautiful, yeah. lovely book, guys. And this is love as in the story of his beautiful mum and dad. Mum and dad, yeah. Through the decades. How they met. Right through their life, what they were like together, and then over the kind of his his perspective That's as they both. But this was one of those things of it being taken out of stock in the libraries. Oh, was it? Right? And so you kind of went, oh, "Don't take Which it. Library don't was keep it? that in the library. Library, why didn't they take it libraries. Really? Why? Because it wasn't being taken. Yeah, that, that would be. Is that how books? How they work out which books to? Retire if they've not been taken out yeah. for a while. No, it's not. Well, yeah, it is, but I mean, it's like anything, isn't it? There's a theory, and then there's like yeah. a load of different people involved and uh, whatever, you know. I mean, I would look at a book like this and keep it in stock yeah. just because yeah. it's great, but then yeah. somebody else would look at that and go, What's this? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever, you know. You think just based on the fact that everyone knows the snowman that they would keep it for that? Don't you think? Funnily enough, this. Uh, the snowman being like a kid's book, people don't think that's a comic necessarily. So they would look at this, and this always escaped the the comics ghetto in the libraries. They never quite. It always ended up in the adult fiction. Right. So there'd be a load of books, you know, Tom Clancy's uh, whatever, and, and D is for Deadhead, and and then that. And, and this would be sitting there, and this is like just a lovely, beautiful book about his dad. Beautiful. I mean, so anyway, for whatever reason, there it was. I was sad to see it come out of the collection, but I did get it for 50 pence for my own. So, you know. It's and it's hardback. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. I've only got a softback of it, but Bag it's lovely. It the century. So it's very, very nice book. I mean, Raymond Briggs is always just great, isn't mm. it? Ethel and Ernest, true story. Well done. Yeah. I remember really when I first saw a snowman really trying to draw a picture like that with all oh, that yeah. hatching and the colour. Because mm -hmm. I've just been used to get was it weekly or monthly magazines about drawing your team where first issue uh -huh. with this and that and it'd be a reduced price yeah yeah, yeah and yeah, then sure. all weeks after it was like four times the price yeah. whatever yeah yeah and the first it was about hatching and stuff it's that it's that hat the tart the sort of tart and tweed hat that he's got the snowman right the, the hatching and that's nice. absolutely beautiful yes I always find that fascinating have you read that? no no, no I've not oh, it's very good indeed yeah. lovely book kind of a you know no nonsense real story even there's the wee bit I was having a wee look through it again and the wee bit at the start and <sighs> when, he, when he meets her and then like she's leaving the house and they're going to get married you know and they're both going along the street, and she goes, "Hey, I'm getting married," and he goes, "So am I." It's like what a great, yeah. what a great little bit to get the story started, you know. Raymond Brown's really knows how to write a good. Oh, he's a great writer as well as an artist. Yeah, it's really nice. 
Mm-hmm. It's really, really nice. Beautiful. Do you want to say after it? I'm still, uh, I'm You're still wrecking through this. Yeah. I'm trying to keep a straight face at the Prince Albert, Albert page. They have back Kobe uh, pits. <clears throat> what else do you have there? Yeah. Come on, you've got a big bath. Nice. Well, I moved on. I, I, I thought of Eddie Campbell. And you know his... The guy who did uh, from with Alan Moore. The, yeah, yeah, From Hell. And he's got his own career that he's been doing 30 years or so of his books about his life. And he used to sort of call it Alec. He was called Alec. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the more recent ones, he just calls himself Eddie. But as they go through, a lot of the earlier ones were about his relationships and stuff when he was younger. And then as they went on, he's he's married. So you kind of get to know him, his wife... The daughter, you kind of get to know the family, you know, as he's using them in these stories. So, I just brought this as an example of that. There's some really nice stuff in this about his daughter, he's arguing with his daughter, and he ends up dying. Yeah, that's it there. Oh, yeah. This is getting away from the, the love, romantic love, but there's like this bit with the daughter and they're arguing, you know, give me the money, no, right. And then throws the money, she throws the money in his face. All you think about is money. Here it is then. Throws it in his face. You know, and he's the dad stood there and it's like the still standoff, you know. And then she's like, I'm off. And goes to the car. And he's like, no, it's not going in the car. No. And he ties up. He's so furious. He ties up the car with a rope. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You can feel it that this is the kind of idiotic rubbish you would do yeah. when you were wound up. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then, of course... Actually, a good example of his wife, you know, she goes, Eddie, stop. She goes, I've dealt with it. Take the rope off the car. <laughs> you know, it's like she fixes that off. He, he just has to fizz and steam and take the rope off the car, you know, thinking, I'm an idiot, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, really, I guess it is cumulative. If you've read all the different comics, you get to know the, the characters, you know. I read that one. Yeah, and that's not the it's not the main oh, part of that story I've at all. Seen it. No, I, th- Maybe I didn't, well, I didn't, I didn't like it. Well, well half of that was about money, history. Yeah, see, that was the thing. It was all about the money that yeah. I could get into. The first half is not his usual style. Yeah, I was like, I'm just like, you know, you get that, you get that from Angus. Yeah, that's what I got. Years ago, yeah, I was like, about that. No, this reminds me. Do you remember Fungus the Bogeyman? Yeah, he did that as well. Yeah, I've got that. Oh, was that him? Yeah, from the Suburgy Man. Yeah, he did that I think that's well. the first one I recall reading mm-hmm. that I was able to get it like yeah. the school library. Yes. Okay, here's my next one. Oh, cool. Weird Love. Ooh. And this is Craig Yo. Craig Yo does these collections of old comics. Like old 50s kind of stuff. Yes. I fell for a comic. <laughs> <laughs> So that's from 1953. Goodness. And it's and he's. What do you mean? It's. Well, he does I guess these things are out of copyright or something, so he just picks them up. But that story is from 1953, yes. and it's called I Fell for a Comet. Exactly. And that works from 1953 as well. He didn't redraw it, did he? No, he didn't redraw it. Alright. So, so, so this is from. Middle of one June. It shows you how the pro- propaganda was uh, <laughs> infiltrated comics as well. For a comic. What else? There's loads of good ones. Love of a lunatic. <laughs> so you know, obviously, all the women look like the oh. the craze, don't yeah. they? It's Ogden Whitney, and he did um, Herbie. If you've ever read any Herbie, that's a brilliant. I'm thinking of the, the guy. Big, big fat Herbie superhero guy. Oh, he's like yeah. the most powerful boy in the world, but he's like totally lazy. He sucks lollipops. <laughs> <on his mom. laughs> uh, it's so good. <coughs> so great artist. What else we got? I'll pass this up. Never heard of Herbie. Herbie. I like the sound Herbie of Herbie. Herbie. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, there's, a good, there's a great one where he's like, he has to fly up and do something, and the drawing sticks in my mind. Is <laughs> even as I'm thinking of it, he's just kind of like walking and sucking this lollipop, and he's just going through the through the air, you know, like towards the window. He's like, okay, then, you know, I'll go. And that's him flying, you know. <laughs> the rest of them are. He's like. And his dad thinks he's useless. You big fat nothing, he always says. Because he goes up and... So was that like its own comic? The Herbie. Was it a straight pole? Herbie was, was yeah, back in the day, yeah. I've got a few Herbies. So are all these comics from the era of the romance comics? Yeah. 
from the 50s. That's right, 50s, 60s. And yeah. they have been compiled. Oh. That's, that's an interesting one, yeah. So, yeah, it's good. Back. Okay. I've got more there. Now then? I've got Dean Haspiel, who's one of my favourite right artists. I felt for a comic. Really? Boy in my pocket, Billy Dogma. And Billy Dogma is uh, like a superhero guy. And, uh, Thanks, Nate. Yeah, D um, Dean Haspiel's got a great, great style. And, but it's always about the two of them in love, you know? Okay. And so they have all these conversations, you know? And it's just nice, but it's very fanciful. He's he's kind of inspired by Kirby a bit as well. Mm. You know, I don't know what it's Gingers. It's got a good name, but I can't remember. Well, look at that! Look, kissing by you know. Beautiful. It's great. It's romantic. And signature cross bandages on the face. Yeah. Great. So, Jane Legit, that's it. Jane Legit. Jane Legit. And Billy Dogman. Oh, that's right, and he comes up, she's in the office, you know? And he comes in. <laughs> Is he just can't open the window, open the window with a glass. The, I, I brought you an extra parachute pack and buttercup. Let's <laughs> get while the getting's good. So it's like, Billy! And they're off. Anyway, it's very good. It's got a, a real, it's got a feel to it. I mean, look at that. Our regular intercourse has become essential to my daily nourishment. <laughs> That's good stuff, isn't it? I really like his art. So if you like his art, you're off to a good start. But it's his writing that... It's quirky. That does it. Quirky, romantic, sexy, tough, you know? Good stuff. And then there's Volcano Girl. That's a, that's a separate story. Which he is reading. Oh, look at that picture. He's reading Volcano Girl oh. comic. Ah, yes. Very good, well spotted. Actually, there's a previous page when yeah. he's in well, the it's, bed. It's on there yeah. as well. That's, that's, he's reading Volcano Girl. This is the comic, comic he's reading in yeah. the bed. It's caught the insanity quite like well. Yeah. Do the pages change colour? Uh, no, oh, no, 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 I've just seen that differently. <clears throat> Yep, so that's a great one. He's done a few of those Billy Dogman comics, and they were all good like that. Dean Haspiel. I did. I interviewed him a few years ago. Really? Yeah. For Freddy. For the blog, yeah. Okay, I've got some superhero stuff. Because some, something that you always got when when I was a kid was you got a romance story mm. in the superhero comics. Mm. I don't yes. know if they still do that. Yeah, they do. Do they? But well, it's usually based on old, old ideas like right. Jean Grey and Cyclops. Yes, and okay. Jean Grey Cyclops. No. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is the first issue of X-Men ever bought. Oh, 129. Yeah. 12 pence. Colossus. Mm. Is that Colossus? Colossus. Yeah. Colossus. Yeah. No worries. No. Storm. storm. This is when I fell in the storm. Was this, mm. was this your first... X-Men. With... It, was this your first uh, group of X-Men you came across? Yes. You didn't come across the earlier, uh, the, the original Kirby, uh, the think. British. It was probably pretty simultaneous. They used to reprint the Kirby X Men at the same time in a right. magazine called Marvel Superheroes. Right. Uh, and then in Rampage, which was another Marvel one, they were printing this stuff. Right. And then, of course, if you went in and had a bit more money, and you could get one of the oh, well. American ones that yeah. were coming at the same time. So it was kind of simultaneous. Um, but there's one page in this that it's all part of the dark here we go. Yes, you've got a dark side or something. And this and this is like a, I mean it's Chris Claremont, right? So it's horribly overwritten. There's like, you know, <laughs> two hundred words in every panel. But it's them talking and it's hokey as fuck. I mean it really is, but it's so I mean, come on, I've got to read it. Like here we go. Gene, you're everything to me. As necessary as the air I breathe. I used to say I love you without truly knowing what I was talking about. I know now a little anyway. Jean, I love you. And I you, Scott, with all my heart. And all of this is happening in the middle of a full-on smog. Alright. I mean, look, I mean, look at right. what they're saying while 
<laughs> the tongue's right down her throat there. And of course, all these, the, the Phoenix costume and everything, what, John Byrne, you know. So nice. John Byrne is very... You know, this was, I was reading this like as a kid, like, <laughs> you know, Trembling. Know. But I don't know why, but I like it. Oh yeah, I like oh, it. Oh yeah, you got a lot of red hair as well. Well, nice. I was, I was, uh, Come with you. reading this as a kid. To me, this was like the most romantic thing ever. This was like the absolute yeah. heights of love. <laughs> You know, this was love, romance, everything. I mean, it turns out it's just crap. Yeah. But, you know, it's still ingrained in my mind. Yeah. And, and such that when they did X-Men 2 or whatever it was, and, and they were doing scenes with them, I was like, oh, I was getting Altieri in the cinema. Huh? Like 25 years it later, I was like, this is my, this is the original love story for me. Yeah. This is like, no. the, this is the heights of, of love. Ah, and what about, this what about the Hulk there, Betty? That well, romance well. So that could never happen. So was that before you saw Superman? No. Right. But that but in that fit, but, in, but in, Right. Oh, uh, really? Uh, maybe because... Well, yeah. wasn't it? They didn't go into this much detail. No. Because, you know, I thought you were dead, Gene. You know, I'm... You know, I'm uh, I mean, they're talking about things like... Uh, I need to explain things about your date and Colleen Wing. But, so, I mean... It's crap, but they're talking about things that kind of could happen, you know, like yeah. people dating somebody else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more than the real. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, so. It's grounded. Well, yeah. Can, really, at that time, at that, that time it was. Is that Cyclops? That's Cyclops yeah, yeah. and Gene. At that time it was for the superheroes mm. in the early 80s. <laughs> See, if I had allowed myself, because of course they all thought Gene Grey was dead. And then she came back as this phoenix, you know. Mm. So they, there he's talking about when she was dead and he couldn't feel anything. He felt nothing, you know. Because he couldn't have allow himself to lose her and feel it. I mean, it's, you know. It's yeah, that's the fire. Yeah. You know, it's, so I love that page. That page, and it's the three of them, you know, the passion. Look at the passion. Yep. And I was at a convention a few years ago and, and there was a very beautiful woman there and she was dressed exactly like Phoenix in that costume and then mm. he about fainted as, a, as she came walking up. <laughs> so that's, this is a great, uh, <laughs> and of course in this same issue, Vison, of course there's Storm, and Storm's talking to, to Kitty Pride, you know, and I just fell in love with Storm. At this point you're struggling to... She's got weird cat-like like eyes in that yeah, one. She does. Yeah. To keep a lid on your emotions, you're right, like, oh, that, that, that's this me. Very, this is Storm. This was unbelievable, really. So great stuff. Really liked it. And, and of course, this is the classic X-Men. Mm. Who is the artist? John Byrne. John Byrne, uh, yeah. I remember that period without yeah. having that many issues of it, but... Do you know, and I feel like... I always remember this... You know, the guy's going, hey, put the magazine back, it's in a library or something, you know, and he's like, oh. and then the next one he's like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> it's like, come on, Wolverine, don't do it, you know. He was always going to go off at any moment, but then the robots come in, and it looked like Colossus on fire with a, this was very exciting. This comic seemed really yeah. good, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, the X-Men, they were. Oh, they were good, they were, really they were good. good. Yeah. Who was the main yeah. villain in that, that story arc? Well, this was when they were getting into the Hellfire Club. Uh, yeah. well, Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian yeah. Shaw, yes. A um, mastermind. No, nothing, like nothing to do with the Dark <laughs> Vader. No, 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 a mastermind. This was mm-hmm. taken out and put on the wall for a few years. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 then, uh, the Star Wars, Wars toys uh, and ticked off the ones I had, you know, that got Rob Boba Fett and... Uh, Look at Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. Um, I always wanted that radio control mm. that 2D2 because I oh, thought you know God, who didn't? <coughs> I thought if you had a radio control that too and he came in the room that's the real one that's, yeah, that's, that's just right. like having real R2D2 isn't it <laughs> <laughs> so anyway there you go oh, you've seen that before perhaps and you know in a similar thing Spider-Man oh, 1980 look right oh, look at that oh, this, is, this, oh, was, that's this was a Christmas that. present oh, in that's 1980 lovely. Oh, I bet you loved that when you saw that. Oh, yeah. I loved it, yeah. Oh. I mean, the annuals that you got are just terrific. I mean, mm. I love getting I love the look of it. The writing on the side as well, yeah. you can tell. Grand jeans. <laughs> they even just put the same thing on the back. 
Yeah. I mean, that logo as well on some of my annuals over there. Yeah. yeah. This is like unique. There's a Hulk when I found it there. Carby, it was having some man around the front. And it was just the same as well. Yeah. I thought yeah. that one Hulk's like. Yeah. And then he's got one. Yeah, so the story in here is the... Oh, yeah, with the funny colour, when they do the colour yeah, thing. Yeah, some that. of it's red. Do you know what? I used to copy all these pictures of Spider-Man. Every, every single one of them, I'd be copying them. So Stegron and the Lizard, that's the that's the main story. Mm. Oh. <coughs> this book is just unreal. Anyway, the reason I bring it is because we've got this wee interlude here. Nicely drawn, and look, it's... It's Peter Parker and Mary Jane walking through the windy city, you know, and they're, they're talking through, you know, what, what are they saying? How did, how did we get to be these kind of people and all that, you know? Are they sure that's the architecture there? Yeah. Is it? What were you doing? I don't know. You don't know a lot of things. You know? Who are we these days, Red? Who are we? I mean, this is existential. Oh. You know, I got this... And the uh, selection be. box, you know? five, six, <laughs> and the Muppets was on telly. Yeah. And, and you could read, <laughs> who, who are we these days? I can't tell you, people. It started out so simply, you know. Yeah, the architects are going past the statues, and then there's two pages of this stuff, no responsibilities and blah blah. And this again seemed as a kid, you thought this is what adults are like. Adults are going to be behaving like this. They're talking about their relationships. They're going. They're walking through parks on windy days. Pondering existential questions. Exactly. Was yeah. He, was he not a kid by this point? Is he grown up a bit more grown up? Well, by you've got. Yeah, by this he, point, he was it's working like already. Spider Man has been going like <coughs> seventeen years. Right. So you know, yeah. like, so it's like. Yeah. So he was a photographer. He was grown mm -hmm. up now. I went through that same James <laughs> Bond thing, you know, where the kind of the time went along. And he was like, was he getting older or was he not? It was yeah, like, yeah, it, was yeah. A, it was a weird sort of mix. Now they just completely rebrand it with a new day. Yeah, yeah. I think with uh, yeah with James Bond, I remember with Pierce Brosnan, there was a definite. This was this was nothing to do with the old ones, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like ten. I think that one starts and it's like ten years ago, and he's hanging out with Double Six. And I thought, no, yeah. ten years ago he was Roger Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was you, I killed. So I thought, okay, we've cut, we've definitely cut yeah. the cord now. So there we go, that's another orange and jeans. Little view of uh, relationship. In the middle of this crazy, I love this oh. story by the way, it's a Christmas one. In fact, I put it on the blog this year. The Christmas. Did you? I, I did. And uh, there he is with the, the Christmas trees falling over and all that, you know. And, so anyway, great, great comic, and um, oh, see, this this ends just to spoil the end. And Stegron like sort of loses his powers and freezing, you know, and, mm. and then he falls into the ice, and it's like, well, so I might as well, oh no, this is Peter going, I might as well go find myself some place to get warm. There's nothing more to keep me here, and there's Stegron. Freezing, uh, freezing. And that's the end. And you think, mm hmm, okay. But well, I just read quite recently that there was another bit after that where Spider Man goes to the Kurt Connors house and he's given like the wee boy presents and all that. So it's a nice happy ending. Mm. But obviously, they, they the, didn't have the room for that here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they cut that up. They just finished it and off. They just end up like that, you go. God, God, fucking hell, Spider Man is a bit of a cold bastard. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool, <laughs> that is the final page, isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> great book, that. Love that. I, I'd love to get my hands on that. <coughs> oh yeah, the cantina. Yeah. Of uh, the Star Wars. Well, this, this in all fairness, nowadays you'd probably open up and there'd just be a nice cardboard cut out. Well, stand, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, superhero versions oh. of of uh, oh, Robin Romans. Is this your last one? Oh. Uh, yep. Yeah, I've, I've got one more. <laughs> oh. And again, <laughs> it's. Drawn together, <laughs> Aileen and R. Crumb. So, with the two of them being great cartoonists and and being married all these decades, this is a good collection of all the comics they jammed on through the through the decades, and it's really nice. And of course, so of course, part of it is they show you their married life and and all their sex life and just just everything. But it's a good little collection of a married couple. Are they still together? Yeah. 
They're drawn together. The world's only cartoon and couple. <laughs> yeah, it's a thick show. <laughs> Contains shocking material for adults <coughs> only. Yeah. So, great little book. There you go. Knock about £23. No. That's his... That's his muse. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, he used to draw a character and then he met her mm. and she looked like he's... Can I draw it? Yeah, yeah the one. She a lot younger than him as well. Emma Frost. Liz? Sorry. She a lot younger Liz. than him as well. Um, I never thought about that. Oh, she certainly looks at She certainly looks at Yeah, I think she is, now that I think about it. I mean, you see him now. So that's my lot, guys. That's love. Very good. I was thinking of someone else, but I, didn't, I thought I'm not bringing that. Oh, because we mention it all the time, you know, the Mr. Miracle Barda. Yeah. yeah. Then being in love was often put in. Big Barda. Big Barda, yeah. Yeah, oh, not other people. Yeah, when I go there, we've, we've, no, we've, we've, we've seen them in the last couple of times. I think. So, uh, yeah. Just a way to make me giggle. Big bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I was I was thinking about the love and and yeah. and the topic for for tonight's meeting, I was trying to think when well, superheroes. Yeah, you could have as you brought the the Jingle and Cyclops yes. relationship. That, that was the one. That was the yeah, and I was thinking. The, and I read this week the death of Gwen Stacy. <laughs> mm, yes. But, that so much but that's not quite what I was looking for because that's more mm. about the fighting and the commitment and yeah, there's love in it, but it's not a love story. Yeah. Um, shall I just do mine? It's just one. Crack on. Crack so on. talking about love, and I was trying to think <clears throat> about superhero comics. Where love mm. is important. And then, if I had to choose one, it would have been this one, which is the Batman Adventures Mad Love, mm -hmm. which in some sort of way tells this, the story and the origin of Harley Quinn and how she fell in love for the Joker. And as the title, Mad Love, well, that describes very well the story. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great, great story. It's great art and a script mm -hmm. um, by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. Mm -hmm. um, this is normally considered in all the Batman adventure comics. This is the number one. This is the best. Yeah. And it's one of the best Batman stories of all, mm -hmm. actually. Although Batman features very little in it. Yeah, very little. Because it's about Harley Quinn and the Joker, really, and their relationship. Um, I thoroughly recommend this one, um, and it's, it's absolute bonkers. You don't know, you can't understand why she's fell in love for him. Mm. But so, she does. He's so nasty to her. And he's so nasty to her constantly, all the time. But Joker plays Bannon for everything, and then she decides that Everything that's going wrong, every time the Joker is getting crazy and, and is blaming her and being nice to her, she blames Batman too. Right. So <laughs> it's quite sinister. Isn't it? it's, it's really sinister. I mean, and at the same time, it's yeah. portrayed in a way that is very entertaining and it's funny as well. But deep down, it's, mm. it's a really deep story. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't read it, please do. This is a Spanish version of it that I picked up uh, a few years ago. It's a nice little book. It comes with other uh, adventure comics. But uh, yeah, that's... I recommend Mad Love. The Adventures of Batman. Mm -hmm. So have a look. Mm -hmm. It's got a really good, pa good series of panels in it where she goes into the costume shop. Yes. And uh, it's like the guy tells her that she can't get it or something like that and she kind of walks out and then walks back in and then punches him and takes yeah. the thing out. you got but another that, romance there between Mr Freeze and his wife, <laughs> yeah. Nora, I think. Oh. Yeah, oh. but that's, that's from a different, uh, that's from a different mm. comic adventure, but yeah, that one. I think that was made up in the series as well, wasn't it? The whole Nora storyline. Yeah. It wasn't that before, he was just... A one-shot thing. Yeah. yeah. But Arnie had a wife that was frozen in there. Oh my God. <laughs> The, the, the Bruce yeah, Timm cartoon, it was the first, Heart of Ice, the very first cartoon that Bruce Timm 
directed in the series. No. And many people reckon that's uh, the best yeah, uh, individual uh, cartoon in there. They told the actor that was doing the voice to give as l little emotion as possible to sound almost like he was just void of any yeah. emotion whatsoever. But yeah, the, the Mad Wolf one is, is, is amazing. The way that she falls in love with the Joker, the way that the Joker plays her, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the way that she tries to please the Joker because she's never quite rich. She wants to satisfy the Joker, you know, she wants to, oh, I want to, the Joker make him happy, you know, and but then she doesn't understand that, you know, the Joker, yeah, wants to kill the Batman, but he wants the one to do it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's. It's all there. It makes for a good episode as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a short story, but it's it's really, really good. Yeah. And I said the art is fantastic, and the story is just the right length, and it goes through so many things, and it's just like Batman Adventures. It doesn't want to go too deep to that. It's not a serious, like a serious comic, yeah. although it's a very serious topic. So, what is yeah, the recent relationship of Harley Quinn? Because I know she's a very popular character. No. Nowadays. 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 I'm saying she, I mean, she started in the cartoon, didn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, just, and, um, right. The way I see it is, she's I mean, kind of... Dress up a certain time. She is the mm -hmm. yin to the joker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the way that I see it is, she has been taken, and, and the comics that I've done lately with Harley Quinn on its own, mm. it's becoming kind of a Deadpool, like a female yeah, Deadpool yeah, yeah. by the DC Universe. Mm. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's a character that breaks the fourth wall, and... There's constant jokes and see how far I can go with the violence and and, and at the same time you know right. make it, try to make it funny. So. But that's not what she's like in here. Though. No. In here no. she's she's well. See, this is this is the origin. Her. This is the original Harley Quinn. This is okay. how she was. This is how she was created. This is the first appearance. Uh, or, or that tells the origin of it. She, she seems a bit like a sad, abused character. She yes, is. she From is. How we are describing her. She is. So I'm wondering why she's a hero to. She is in this. Is it because she's changed into more she's of a dead as, type? Yeah, because she's seen as like the downtrodden, but she she kind of rises mm. from that. Right. She was originally just written as just a bit character for one episode, but they found she was so popular among the staff that were making the cartoon that they decided to yeah. make her a permanent character. Interesting. Like a psychic for the Joker. Mm. She also came over really well in the uh, in the series for the fans as well. Yeah. Mm. Huh? And the Suicide Squad. Uh, She's, she's become one of the main characters. Yeah, yeah. by the suicide as well, they've taken it like she's been the, the independent in the other comics where mm -hmm. she's kind of breaking the fourth wall and doing yeah. these funny sort of humorous things. Mm -hmm. cool. But the curious thing about this is yeah, she's inspiring Deadpool, which in turn actually what Deadpool did in the comics, let's say in the nineties. Yes. Uh, actually John Byrne did it with <laughs> She Hulk <laughs> before yeah. that. When she did the She Hulk uh, comic series, and the She Hulk would break the fourth wall and would talk to the reader, and you know, it would be a lot of comic um, sketches through the story mm. and laughing at itself, at, at, at the comic itself, at the story itself, and She Hulk laughing at herself of the situation that she was going through. And so that was already done in the night uh, before Deadpool happened. Before mm. Um, Harley Quinn happened as well, so yeah. But uh, that's a nice little story. Does she ever like give the Joker a good kick in the balls? You know, quite a few times, yeah. Not yeah. in this one, not yeah. in this one, but she does in other because she just wants to please. I'm a bit yeah. worried that she's like a and, she, and she's she called him always character. pudding, and he's constantly don't call me pudding. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So, so Harley you know, Quinn. Harley Quinn, yeah. And mad love. Mad well, come on. I, uh, I, I, I have to admit, I struggle when it comes to finding stories about love. So some of these have chapters that are more love-orientated. Samurai and Executioner is part of a long series. Uh, and it's a se Unlike a lot of Japanese uh, uh, comics, it's actually a separate writer and a separate uh, artist that have done this. And I think it's the same two that did uh, uh, The Wolf and Cub. Um, mm, right. So there's a few, few bits here and there of um, 
little romantic tales and little would be romantic tales with a twist like the the blind guy who murdered his wife and his wife's lover and then ended up uh, uh, getting uh, arrested escaping killing lots of people and the samurai came in to execute him through cunning but one of the stories here is uh, he, he does become an executioner uh, hence the title and he has to kill a woman um, and she's got like a, a sheet over her face so he doesn't see her when he kills her but then the sheet falls off uh -huh. and he suddenly realises that oh, no. that's the woman the very first woman that he fell in love with oh. the very first was woman was he going to be that with his mum because he just yeah. killed her <laughs> just killed well her. He, he killed his dad he killed his through, dad uh, through an honour killing oh, um, god it's terrible isn't it so uh, after uh, a wee bit of a um, <clears throat> tiny wee bit of a, a flashback uh -huh. He uh, the, the the lassie thinks she'll she's got the better of him. He's not gonna be able to bring himself to hurt her. Right. So he tells her to to sort of ease up. He can't do it. So she sort of loses the tension in her neck, and all of a sudden the samurai skillfully chops her head off without a single bit of uh, um, hesitation. And uh, you can see here in do, do glorious you know, this detail. Is a, a, of the episode for doing. Yes, uh, <laughs> but I'm uh, as you will soon find out. I, I will struggle with this. So he's raising up the head. Yep. Oh my god. Yep, and there he is sitting there casually with the head on his lap. Really? So um. So, so what? So because it was his first love, and he yeah. chopped the head off. Yeah, and it's love. Oh, right, right, here's right. here's another That's one. Brutal. This is uh, this is one of the long running uh, nice, nice <laughs> long running love stories in Marvel. It's between Thanos and, and death, and uh, okay. Thanos has uh, Thanos has conquered quite a lot of the galaxy or the universe. He's battled cunningly battled these beings called the um, uh, the the old elderly gods. And at the end of the day, what does he get from it? Death, who he's fell in love with, still won't even talk to him. That's so at the lame. end of at the end of this, Thanos actually cries, uh, having worked so hard, and death, uh, his love, seems to not really care less. Um, ah, where is it? The other right. Oh yeah, he even kills one of her minions in glorious style, um, right in front. And there he is. He's crying. Who could have guessed that becoming a god would prove to be such a hollow victory? Thanos mm -hmm. is crying. Out of heartbreak, I brought some Walter Simonson for us. Yeah, you might think, looking at the cover, this will be between between Thor, Sif, and um, uh, Jane. But actually, this is more about Baldur and uh, Carnella. Uh, because Carnella is the love of Baldur, the brave. Oh, and uh, she's... Well, she gets Stop captured it. by uh, a giant called Utgard Loki, who's no no relation to the Loki. Uh, she's basically tortured throughout the entire story until Baldur manages to... Like, they treat her like a mouse, because uh, they are giants. Baldur manages to rescue her, to, uh -huh. with no help from Thor. So uh, he uh, then at the end of it, you know, there, there is some romance in here. Uh, okay. They kiss and they, uh, they leave... But basically, it's a, it's an entire hardship of uh, poor uh, poor Baldur and Carnella, but he does prevail. There's also a wee picture of Peter A. Bill, mm -hmm. and there's a sort of off the side sort of romance. Well, well, not romance, but sort of uh, would they want they with uh, Lady Sif. Lady Sif, beauty, beauty, Thor's pretty cool. Yeah, this is probably one of the earliest ones where they gave Thor the full on beard, mm -hmm. and it was at this point where they done away with his Donald. Um, Blake. Yeah, Don Blake uh, identity. Okay. So they no longer had that as part of the story. You, you, you also see uh, here, I think, uh, he takes on Sabretooth on it in some of the other X-Men. Yeah, that's the crossover with the uh, Mutant nice. Massacre. Mm. He wears the beard because he had the scarves. Ah, so yes, he, he wore a problem. mask. At, um, so wait a minute, is this Walt Simonson writing this? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. he writes and draws the whole but thing. No, it's Salvo is the artist. Is it? Yes. Ah, I see. Uh, he's the, the writer. writer. Yeah. See, if I think of Walt Simonson's Thor, it's not this year. No, this is this is right after this. Yeah. So, I like Salvo Simonson though, when he's inking himself yes. as well. Brilliant. When I was looking through possible romantic books uh, on my way here, <laughs> Slain, I thought, Slain. okay, Slain. Yeah, really? there's not. You might think there's not going to be much in the way of uh, true romance, but when you look at this, there's actually almost a, a three-way 
three-way romance you could get here. Well, there's uh, some of that. The, the oh, artwork that is absolutely stunning. I'll let you have a look. There's a lassie called Nest, who uh, it's always emphasised that she's from an ordinary background, but she she turns out to be quite an extraordinary girl. Mm -hmm. And then thought uh, uh, Slain leaves her to uh, go on his quest back to the village. Uh, but their tales together have become legends, so officially they're still uh, still partners. Whereas Thor's ex-wife, who's uh, a wee bit older than him and has a son with him, he meets her afterward, and she, of course, is very angry because she's heard about all this tale of um, of Nest. But before she can do anything, uh, a lady who Thor uh, uh, slain saved in one of the previous stories is taken over the village. And she can transform into a demon. There she is there. So between them, throughout the whole tale, it's a hatred of three women towards each other who have affection of some sort, not always good, towards Slain. Artwork is fantastic. Have a, have a wee I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that's your biggest, your biggest stretch so far. This is Liberty Meadows by Frank Chow. And there is uh, some genuine romance in there. Uh, the main, the main uh, girl, uh, ah, what was her name? Is it Candy or Brandy? That's it, Brandy. Uh, there's uh, this guy here. It's been a while since I've read it. Uh, Frank, I think he's called. He's madly in love with her, but he can never bring himself to uh, ask her out or anything like that. So it's uh, even then, it's not quite a romance. It's a uh, kind of a failed romance. But I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping at the very least you guys will uh, appreciate some of the uh, some of the humour there. Poor, uh, it's probably not even he's right. Ah, yeah, Frank is Frank, but it's all uh, intersected with uh, a pig called Dean, who tries chatting up all women, and he always gets his face kicked in, um, or punched, and uh, Frank Chow often portrays himself as a chimp. Yeah, so, something which I thing. often do when I'm trying to draw stuff. <laughs> so uh, I brought two Frank chairs for you guys that we, a wee look at. Liberty Meadows always looks really nice. <laughs> I like the art style. He always reminds me of Adam Hughes that one. Must <laughs> He's kind of lost Jesus. his mind. Though, oh, yes. Yep, you can uh, tell he likes his job. He's lost his mind. Well, Frank, so I'm not sure of it. Mm. He draws all these really stupid. <laughs> was this studies? <laughs> oh, he draws like. Well, the one I saw, it, it was like Star Wars cover. You know, they do the mm -hmm. print them and it's like blank covers and they draw things on them. Uh -huh. and, he, and he had like Princess Leia in her slave outfit and she's standing like jiggling her bricks and all that, you know, and then behind her, it's Yoda like, oh, <laughs> you know, just like, what the fuck would you draw this? It's just, uh -huh. you have to see it to get this. Like, I mean, it's like. It was, like, that. it was like an eight-year-old yeah. idiot boy or something <laughs> had suddenly got these skills, to, and then <laughs> this is what he drew. He sat like, <laughs> you know, and you think <laughs> maybe I'm being harsh, but that, that was my impression. Yeah, I thought, he's What's wrong with him? Why is he? Was I? It was. A, was it not him that did the the, uh, the spider woman? One yeah, and a long one. It was yeah. literally just like her with her legs akimbo, but looking like. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. So he did. He did one with her Marvel, legs. and it was just Marvel like, stories with her. Everybody's going fucking nuts because they're like, "What the fuck is going on?" You right. mean, like all these, all these covers, like fine, fine, oh, fine. Okay. Then all of a sudden, just arse, like big yeah. arse, but <laughs> tits hanging over. Yeah, and she's like. I'm and the thing with, with Francho is because the people were, prote were protesting and were going about it. He went and did another one. Yeah. Far that even, yeah. even bigger, <laughs> even bolder. It's like, even what the fuck? Crazy. You know, when I was very Adam Hughes, like if somebody went Adam Hughes, did yes. that, I would believe it. Yeah. There's a lot of books that are just all Francho's artwork. No stories. Art samples. Yeah, it's kind of different inside, isn't it? Yeah. The inside is like Jeff Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except more gratuitous. <laughs> Jeff Smith, the guy was born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what yeah, it reminds me of. Some of the things in there, yeah. yeah. Born. Yeah, yeah. Is it me? Oh, uh, all I've got is. I think the Ethel was. I, I thought about that once we were there, so I'm glad that they really? brought that. Yeah. But this is some I'm reading at the moment Blankets by Craig Thompson. Halfway through it. The time quote is a rarity. The first. The first love 
story so well remembered and honest that it reminds you what holding mm. feels like. Oh, achingly beautiful. Well, within the first few pages, it, it, it wasn't achingly beautiful. It was like achingly oh, disturbing, some yeah. of it. Um, but it's a really good book. And yeah, yes. there's love in it. And Which is love. the way, yeah, he's doing a real, he's currently, I'd say, in the book, he's about maybe 17, 18. So he's capturing it right. It's really kind of inside you and stuff. You notice a lot of these ones that we've brought along have been black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite a lot of them. Or aspects of them have been black and white and some of the bits have been colour and whatnot. Yeah. Quite interesting. Uh, really I think for certain things black and white like that. The colour can be on the way. Mm. With certain it's just stories. Interesting. Brought, Unless you have to be so careful how you apply the colour and one thing I didn't it. know was involved in this was uh, a lot of Religious passages, mm. Christian stuff, right? Yeah, which he intertwines in. Must have been his cat, his Christian upbringing, because it is a right. semi-biographical work. He says <coughs> at the start. But yeah, yeah the cubby right, old. Okay. Oh. Craig Thompson, cubby old, feel for you, man. And you, yeah, it's that one. The nice thing to read. Um, that was that was. Very popular when it came out with blankets. Right. Yeah, but it was a big deal. Still yeah. Quite a big deal. Yeah. You I mean, sort of must read lists. When was it? 2000. Like, yeah. This is a classic. Yeah, 2003. Uh, yeah. That's what he said, too. So I'm only reading it. Yeah, I'm reading it. 15 years. After the timeless Batman, classic. Last year, read, classic. Uh, what was it? I read last year after forty years or thirty. Galactus coming, Galactus coming to Galactus. Galactus. Yeah. <laughs> Better know. late than never, though. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm enjoying that. But the other book that I have read, which is stuck in my head, a kind of love relationship in there, mm-hmm. is um, the relationship between it's in concrete and it's between concrete and it's oh. scientific. Yes. Uh, Assistant, yes, um, he loves her, doesn't he? Oh, he's mad for her, yes, but she's so. she's not even aware of it, kind of. Well, the books that I've read yeah. so far, did you read the last one? No, oh. no, I've only read about three volumes, three of the collected volumes. Yeah, I'm looking awesome. forward to reading the uh, <coughs> others, uh, but obviously, there's the technicality of it, he's concrete, isn't it? Yes, yeah, with no, he's locked in there. He's locked in and... I think we should mention also in love, oh. uh, in their love topic, uh-huh. there's a couple of things that... One of them is Saga, oh, yeah. by Image Collins. Oh, yeah. Frank Frankie Bogle. Bogle. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, where is so a, a classic that? Romeo and Juliet love story, really. Uh, from two different families, mm. with our enemies, so this is the impossible love. We've got the arms. Yeah. There's magic, there's science fiction all mixed up into... Actually, speaking of Brian K. Vaughan, I just think about it. Um, why the last man? Because he is on a mission to get to his love through basically the entire Everything. story. Yeah, so that's another one about love. Mm. And this is an so, yeah, why the last man saga. saga. And the other thing which we mentioned was the romance comics from the 50s, which were a really good example of that. Some of them are ridiculous and yeah. weird, but yeah, that's an example mm-hmm. of it. And if we're talking about that, uh, I thought about uh, this morning, and I thought, what about Archie? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Betty and Veronica. Yeah. The perpetual mm-hmm. state of who, who, who do you pick? Who, who do you, you love? Who yeah. do you pick? And it was mm-hmm. an absolute classic in comics. Maybe not as well known here in the UK, really, mm-hmm. but it's a really big thing in the States. It's always mm-hmm. been. And in the USA, it's probably the only comic you can still pick up in in a shop, mm-hmm. in a supermarket. Well, it's still comics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like Archie Comics is the only one that are kind of distributed there. Whereas years and years ago, yeah, you could pick up everything, but nowadays, Archie Comics is probably one of the, mm-hmm. the only things you can pick up nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I was remembering that they ended it. They did Archie, Archie marries Betty, and they did an Archie 
they did they just did the both they did the for the both of the two different comics one he picks Betty yeah, and one he's and then one one one. Is Veronica yeah he picks he should one. pick Veronica he should have just done the rate as soon as Bob too that, that's the thing we, I'm sure we had this conversation Paul Lee Amos we already had this yeah. conversation yeah. about who, who, who do we pick Betty well, well, Veronica, Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah so yeah we'll have that Great. so yeah I thought about that yeah. although yeah. we haven't brought I don't have samples of it but I thought just that uh, I just thought they're Calvin and Hobbes as well as just the ah, love for yeah. a, a boy and his love for his friend. He's, he's just, in that, friend. just in the last few weeks, I, s- I said, uh, I started reading it. Uh, does he uh, like it? He does, he took it. In. Oh, my son loves it. How old is he? He's 12. So I thought I need to get him. My son this. absolutely loves it. Calvin and Hobbes. He's read it with three people. I mean, orders. anybody that reads it, yeah. It's great, isn't it? Like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, my son like, loves it. I was reading it every night. I said, I read the very first one. I said, Do you want to read this? And he's like, Oh, you know, more of that. My favourite cartoon. And I just read the first one, you know, when he's got the two sandwiches. He beats Jerry all the time. He just goes <laughs> okay, about it. Yeah. So I read chance. a bit, and then we got a few nights in, and then there I was going, go. and he says, Can you just leave that? And I'll read a bit more before I go to sleep. And I was like, Yeah, oh, sure, okay. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> so, how are you re- Was he. Well, we're we're just the sitting pictures, and we're right. see it, and then I'll just read it. You know. You're reading it, right? Yeah. Are you adding something tone to it and stuff? Sometimes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, ah. Like silent ones. Oh. You know? I mean, some of them there's like four panels, and nobody's saying anything. So. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, oh, good. Wow. Oh, so about, what we're we doing this now? We're talking about central uh, power. Wow. Very okay. cool. They sent us some mm. uh, books. Yeah. Uh, for us to read and can I start words. before I forget it because I read it re- relatively <coughs> recently. You can crack on. Uh, so. I read two of them. The first one was. Um, if you say the title of Moscow. Play. Yeah, Moscow. Oh, I don't want to. Either the. Either the Neverdal and Oystein. Runda. That's quite well, do yeah. yeah. Um, it's a beautiful looking book. Um, but to be honest, it didn't do much for me. I just found it a bit kind of just an excuse to do a bit of Putin bashing, really. Um, it's like it, an anthology, it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. I like how it looks, but yeah, the content for me wasn't really. It didn't really do much for me. So you know, fair play to them. I'm sure lots of people love it. The cover looks stunning. Yeah, it's beautifully drawn on that. Yeah, it's very. Um, it's but very nice to together. I read Eric the Red. King of Winter by Soren Mosdal. That I really enjoyed. Did you? A lot. Yeah. It, I began thinking, mm. but then I started getting into it and I was like, yeah, I'm digging this. It's based on a true story. Yeah, because the, the, the history of it. Because I looked it up and yeah, his son is Leif and that's why it's Leif Erikson because that's how the the family name passes on, isn't mm. it? Uh, so this is about Eric the Red and Lee Ferrickson, basically. And yeah, I'd 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 recommend it. It's a. It did make me ponder how it must have been at the time when suddenly mm. the Christians started arriving, going, mm-hmm. "Well, you've got to start doing this, doing that." And Eric was like, "Hang on, that been all right." <laughs> been alright like probably most other people we've been, been alright we, we, we don't need you we've been alright it still happens to this day yeah um, the Christian missionaries still turn up at um, in the high street well yeah but they also still turn up at um, like little communes out in the rainforest and everything where people have never even yes. been before and they've just kind of turned up to them being like you ever thought about Christianity <laughs> Uh, there was a bit in it which uh, stuck in my head because Eric's wife, she's basically, they've got her and she's been converted. Mm. So now she's like, she wants a church and and Eric's like, 
Basically, doesn't stop her from getting her boobs out. Though. Well, no, that's it. She's that's going. She's, she's going. Oh, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Would you like to build a church so we can talk about it? And he's like, a church in my own backyard for a fuck. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Brilliant. Because you know, he's, everyone well, around him is conspiring. His son, yep. his wife, and now he can't even get his old like you know. The meat and two veg, because <laughs> the missus wants a church. There's in something going on with Eric as well. Though. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole. Did back- you read this? Yeah, yeah. There's a whole backstory about how he's been exiled because he yeah. he killed somebody on a rampage. Yeah, like just on a rampage. That was all it was. You know, he's he's not. There was no president oh, there whatsoever. Oh, Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no president there whatsoever. Did you he like just, it? I liked the way it looked. Yeah, I very much enjoyed the colouring. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. I found it very hard to keep up with the story. Right. I was kind of, because it was all over the place. There was no like, this is oh, this yeah. second, this is that. I was going, shit, where am I now? Like, what, what's happening? Like, who, who's who's this? What's, right. what's going on? So I found it quite hard to keep up with, but I did enjoy the colours, the art, and the layout was lovely as well. There were some pages that were just full yeah, of yeah. splash. Like, My like the gods when, when, talk- when, when he's talking yeah, to the sure. gods. Yeah, 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 when he's talking to the old gods. Nando. I read a couple of them, and this was my favourite of the Centaur books by Thomas Samoylik, and that's Forest Beekeeper and the Treasure of Pacha. So excuse my For, accent. Sorry, Forest Beekeeper and the Treasure, treasure of Pusha. Pusha. Or Pusha. Pusha. And it's a beautiful book. Um, the style of art. Um, very much into oh. very popular in animation lately in the style kind of adventure time that sort of idea but what I really like about this is it's a wee bit of history because it tells you about history yeah, like, that area yeah. there's a little bit of mythology a little bit of legends going through and it tells you a, a nice, entertaining story. Um, lovable characters. And it really makes you go back to respect nature. Mm. Really. Mm. Um, it's a nice little three panels and page one or two with the, the yeah, bear and the other animals. How they're coming all together. Um, so yeah, I... Thoroughly enjoy this. It's a book for all ages, I would say, because you can be a teenager, you can be a, a a child, you can be an adult, and you can enjoy it in different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's notes uh, at the end of the book. It sometimes refers you to them. Yeah, it sometimes oh, refers right. you to them to go back and have a look because there's so much stuff going on. It is quite interesting from so that point of view. Uh, there is an introduction as well, telling you a little bit of um, the story of it as you're going along. It tells you a little bit of what's happening to that land and what is happening uh, in Poland, Lithuania, Russia mm-hmm. area. Um, yeah, it's it's. I really enjoy this. Mm. I thought it was it was a nice, lovely graphic novel. Mm. And thoroughly enjoy that, so I recommend that. And I would be curious uh, to see uh, any other books by Thomas Samoylik, the the artist, the out, the author. Uh, certainly, yeah. Um, because mm. even to know more about it, because I I'm not that knowledge knowledgeable of Eastern Europe history mm. uh, and the last. Yes, yeah, so it's nice to hear someone. So, that, so you're so you're learning part of the culture, so mm. and and other things as well. So yes. Very much. The only thing I had about it was I think sometimes the translation was a bit off, just here and there. I couldn't, I couldn't like some of the sentences didn't mm-hmm. make sense. But I didn't know if that was maybe just because it was written of the time, like the way it was translated. It was meant to be of the time of when they were. It was just some of the sentences yeah, where it didn't. Really I'm not sure if that's <clears throat> part of effect because the, there's one of the characters, the beekeeper. He uses words and terms probably from Polish or Lithuanian or Russian and, and he, he drops these words as he's talking about. So whether that's an effect 
So can you understand the context? Of yeah, you can understand the context, you can understand what I'm saying, but you know, it's like if he was talking in an accent and he put these words, you know, little, oh, okay. or goes Poland and, uh, you know, Tovarich and, I don't know, not necessarily in Russian, but it, it could be in Polish or Lithuanian and it adds words and things like that. I personally didn't notice, but in English is not my first language, so, um, from that point of view, but I find it very entertaining, actually. Yeah. I read that one as well. I, I really enjoyed it. And I notice he doesn't shy away from certain things. Um, there was a, a little bit of brutality in there and not all the characters make it out alive. No, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of it's quite uh, quite brutal, actually. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's the way that it's drawn, the way that it's taught, it, mm. it's, you know... I liked it, though. <laughs> it's educational at the same time. I thought it was quite interesting book. Uh, and I, I do like this sort of book that trying to not just entertain you, but also try to give you some education of certain things and yeah. obviously it's up to you whether you want to take it or not, but certainly there is, yeah, yeah, there yeah. is message and there is uh, history and there is it's also a nice looking book. Uh, yeah. legend and myth. Good thing about a lot of these books actually, when, when you mention it, they're all, a lot of them are hardback. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chernobyl. beautifully coloured. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd definitely read, uh, read more of this. Uh, mm. Uh, is it Th Thomas Samoilis? Samoilis. Mm -hmm. I'll finish the because I would like to read that. Yeah, one. I Tomorrow. haven't read that one. <coughs> it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Natasha, Natasha Bustos and Francisco Sanchez. Very good. Wow. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, 1986, Chernobyl, one of the greatest nuclear disasters in history. Mm. So it's uh, it's quite emotional to read it. It's from that. It's from the point of view of people. That lived through it and, and the aftermath. That, that it's not so much the politics. People the from there. Yeah, yeah. Three, so you three separate stories. Right? Yeah, oh, I remember it. So it starts with the. Yeah. I remember it too. And on spit and image, it was on. Mm. Yeah, I remember. I remember my my teacher in school the next day saying he'd been hiking up in the mountains and it had been raining mm -hmm. and he was like, "So oh, those bastards have been poisoned. <laughs> those bastards, you know." I thought, okay. Can we just get on with the class? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get the messages what to do when we get the four minute warning? And uh, we were like, well, we can't be that bothered because we live in a rural area. So, and then there was that tale of how you paint, you paint yourself white and then you paint the table white and you have a white cloth and you would uh, survive the nuclear blast. Right. And they actually yeah. tested this in the laboratory and they found out there's a tiny element of truth there because if you did that, you would last... Uh, zero point zero 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 one right. from a second longer than you would without it. Yeah, that's like Peter Cook saying he likes sitting at the back of the plane because if it crashes, you die three seconds later than anybody else. Really? <laughs> Get a bit more life. <laughs> yeah. So this opens with the old, uh, the old couple that kind of they go back to live in the area. They they don't want to lo uh, leave their old home. So it's very emotional, you know. You can sort of feel it that, yeah, you would do that, you know. I mean, to us at a distance, it's like, oh, Chernobyl, you know, oh, you imagine. Oh, yeah, but for some people, it's, it's their land. They live, you know, it's like something happened to the death yeah, the farm and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and there's the, all the caring for the animals and, yeah, it's good. It's the horse that comes out. Yeah. It was very, very, this was very good that the, they used this. I thought this was a very effective choice for storytelling. They've put it on the cover as well. Mm. The big, you know, there was going to be like a big amusement pad opening and, and they were all excited for this to, to open and they were going to start going there. But then just before it opened, that oh, accident yeah. happened and everybody's out. So it kind of stands in for this alternate life. That what everybody, could have been. Man. Yeah. So it's... it's very cleverly done and effective because it's all still there, you know. They can go back and look at it and that ghost, and it, yeah, because it never opened. Yeah, yeah. it's so always the amusement park image and the the swimming pool that are used quite a lot mm -hmm. when they showed Chernobyl photos. Yeah, and then you've got the younger couple there, and there's there's like uh, women that were pregnant as it happened, and and there's the people that were employed to go around cleaning up. And getting bodies and all that, and, and they were new. They knew they were doomed, you know. So they're all, and, and it talks about how there they got medals or whatever, and then they're all dead and all forgotten, and, you know. So it's quite 
it's emotional. It's yeah, yeah. The unfairness of it as well. And, I know. It's, it's, I really got into it. I, I did enjoy it. And, yep. And, and it was emotional. It's a breeze of a read. Yeah. But it's, and the art style was good. Yeah. Black and white. And they tell everybody, oh, just leaving for a few days. You know, you can kind of imagine that everybody on the bus. And we'll leave your pets. You know, the kids all the time. And we'll bring the cat and all that. No, I'll leave them. We'll be back on Tuesday or whatever. You know, never went back. That was horrible. That was. That was actually, I can't. I can't spoil it. And, it, and, it, and it's, and it's, it's the not. young man growing up, looking back on it. You're getting his perspective. And, and yeah, that would spoil it. But they kind of go back and visit and... Yeah, I'd recommend that a lot. It's it's really uh, it's convincing and it's emotional and clever. Yeah, as I say. Are you re- are you part of it? I want to. Yeah, can I? Yeah, I it's very good. Because I haven't read that, so I want to read this. Well, that was the first one I saw and thought, oh, this is going to be this. Hey, Mike. <laughs> what were you reading? Comic <clears throat> book. <Bitbit. laughs> it's an anthology. Loads of artists. I like that you've stuffed your mouth with food mm. in order to talk about the cookbook. <laughs> oh, I need a translator. <laughs> so every artist has come up with a me- with a, a dish, and they're portraying how to make it be a comic book. So each one has the ingredients, and then what you do, and then the end result. Hopefully, although I would need uh, a lot of help. So it's like. Um, You'll have uh, the best sandwich in the world. So there's a wolf. He gets his bread. Let's, you know, get tomatoes, bread, and uh, all that stuff, uh, oh, wow. lettuce. and So the wolf does that, and then he makes it, and he shares it with his pals. Share it. There's, uh, there's actual, so many <clears throat> different varieties. You can yeah. follow it and yeah. make the food. Well, <laughs> some, of them, you can follow it. <laughs> some of them are, are a bit more uh, controversial than others. There's DJ Cat and the KKK. Uh, KKK is um, cat... Kauka and Katze. So what the artist has done that's cat, is cat, cat. yeah. Well, uh, is that what it says? <laughs> yeah, that's that's different variations of cat. He's he's drawn uh, a cat wearing a Ku Klux Klan uh, outfit with pointy hat. They've got fish. They put a fish onto a burning crucifix and they're cooking the fish. Um, I, I I'm hmm. not sure uh, how how well that would go in some places, but um, it's actually just a way of showing you how to brace some fish off of fire. Yeah. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, but, but that cat does look quite sick. <laughs> in his, uh, yeah. All in cats look sick. Cats are Cats are evil. That's me. I said it. <laughs> there's another funny one. I that's, uh, that's oh, you have to! Oh my gosh! <laughs> there's a there's a you there's a pork bastard. <laughs> there's a pork dish. Here we are. <laughs> Oh, look at that. So it's making uh, your... your um, I like the way that's drawn. Yeah, well, that's for that's for some sort of baking dish. Um, but the chef happens to be a pig, which makes it hilarious, because there he is really happy cooking his own kind, mm. <laughs> serving it all up to the punters. <laughs> so a lot of it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, and I really like the variety. And maybe I, I did take photos of some of these so I can maybe uh, cook them myself. Um, it's split, it's split up though into like soups, starters, main course. Yeah, like drinks as well. Drinks, uh, yeah. Ben Desserts. wants a wee, uh, a wee look. Yeah. Then there was, that, uh, I think that's staring in from hell. Staring from staring hell. Staring from the hell, yeah. Oh, I th- I've said hell. Because <laughs> basically you would think that when you yeah. see some of this story. This is like what Hunter S. Thompson would dream about. Oh, Absolutely okay. nuts. Uh, so like you've got some odd looking characters in here. Um, including like uh, like little animals, <laughs> crocodile wearing shorts and t-shirt. And you think this will be a friendly thing, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, it looks like they're all going to get stoned and uh, wasted. Then uh, the the cloud opens up, and these alien beings from another galaxy come in, and they start killing other uh, other critters in there. So then it becomes a big battle. Start wrecking stuff. Yeah. And and that nice little crocodile uh, ends up getting uh, splattered. Skinned. Uh, well, no. Just clenched in a fist and squashed. <laughs> um, so the survivors get in their battle gear. So, uh, yeah, it's an odd one. I didn't, I didn't really know how to Ooh, take it, but... Um, let's say I enjoyed it, but I didn't not enjoy it. See, I enjoyed reading it, but I thought, well, it's good. 
But I never once did I think, oh, I regret reading this. So mm. it's got its good side. Take what you want from that. Oh. But it's it's not it's not my all time favorite, of course. But I read that too, but I did prefer. I preferred yeah. that one, yeah. The other one, the, the uh, beekeeper one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I thought, oh, yeah, there's rock and roll, roll. There's no, there's rock, there's monsters, <laughs> and a big adventure. But there's something missing to me in this story. Mm. It doesn't quite reach me. Yeah, go for it. that one I did enjoy very much. Mm. Before it's oh, God. So overall, what was the what was the, the thoughts on some trial stuff? Good. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. good. I thought yeah. the quality was really really good. Yeah, the quality the, is really good. The yeah. editions of the books are magnificent. Yeah. Hardcover. Um, it was shy. a nice selection, really nice course, selection, yeah. and uh, I hope they, I hope they keep going, um, editing and, and bringing more. They've got so much more on their, uh, on on their actual collection. This was just a, a few that they sent us, mm. um, but yeah, they've got they've got a ton more, and they've got new stuff that's coming out as well. So good. yeah, 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 it's good. It's good all, to see. It's good to see somebody taking. Um, mainly sort of Polish made mm. comics and translating them so for everybody to. Well, it's, to it's European it. comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not French, Belgian, European no. comics. No. So we're seeing European comics from all other parts of Europe, which yeah. is interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, mm. it certainly brings you a different mentality to it, mm. uh, cultural points, mm -hmm. sensibilities as well. So, yeah, it's definitely. It's, a fantastic yeah. selection of what they sent us. And I look forward to reading the Eric the Red. And I'm looking forward to reading the Chernobyl. Um, mm. This one most cool. looks funny. Can I take this with me as well? Yeah, yeah. go for it. I want to have a look at this. Um, there's only two other things I wanted to mention. Uh, thank you very much, Central. Mm. Thanks again. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it, um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the Awesome Comics Podcast made their first anthology uh, which is just the three guys that run it, the three stories in one issue. Um, they're all pretty sort of bonkers mm -hmm. out there stuff, but it's you get the feel of their uh, sensibilities. So it's three different stories: uh, Murder Road, Cockney Kung Fu, and Viper. And it's like the first kind of issue of each one. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Cockney Kung Fu was really. Really good. Come, uh, come. <laughs> I liked uh, this one. I like the sound of that. This is my favourite panel. The word fuck, but with <laughs> her kicking this guy right in the face. Um, I hope that all the letters, yeah, all the letters. This, this, the, the big, the, the big, big old, old in, what is it? The big old Kent Road. Kent. Kick, kick off. Off part two, let's dance. There we go. <laughs> that was good. That was really, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. They're all completely different comics, um, but they're in the midst of some. Um, yeah, they're all completely different. Like every, everyone's completely different from the from the last, but they're mm -hmm. they were all good. They were all, they're all their own their own decent little stories in each one, um, and the guys from the Awesome Comics Pod were actually really quick and getting it out as well. I ordered it and got it like a day later. So, mm -hmm. um, sure. But they're on, you can get them in digital copy for quid uh, on their big cartel or you can get this for, it was four, oh yeah, three fifty, And it was only like a pound or something to get it delivered. So it was good. It was well worth it. Well worth it. Um, but the only th other thing I was going to say is that each of those guys make their own comics. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, two of which I was reading recently, which was one was Vanguard, and the other was the Red Mask from Mars, and I got them all on this lovely handy app that I've just found called Comic House. It's oh, yeah. a website. Comic House. Yeah, Comic House. Uh, Comic it, it House spelled H A U S. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically just a collection of loads of different titles. Um, now you get a 14 day trial when you get the, the app, but I've started paying the subscription because I was reading that much off of it, um, but the subscription is only £3 a month, mm -hmm. that's it, and you get to read basically everything, it's basically like yeah, Netflix yeah. but for yeah. comics, for comics you know? yeah. um, but there's loads of independent stuff on it, that's what I liked about it, it's loads of like the small press folks have put their stuff up and there's loads of anthologies and stuff like that. Um, 
I mean, that, remember that Matt Garvey's Devil in Disguise, the, mm-hmm. the last thing? Yes. Um, I, think yes. I, don't, I think Devil in Disguise is going to go up. I don't think it's up yet. Um, but you get other Matt Garvey stuff on there, like White Noir and stuff like that. Um, but there's, there's loads of stuff. Absolutely tons of stuff up there. Um, uh, another one I was reading was the Little Heroes comics. The Little Heroes are the guys that they try to provide the comics making kits for hospitals mm-hmm. um, in around the UK just trying to get books in the hospitals for kids is like impossible mm-hmm. and the amount of regulations and stuff you've got to go through is unreal so they send comic making kits which are a lot easier so the kids get to make their own comic books and stuff but to fund that yes. they've made their own anthology and then stuck up on this as well as well as selling it on its own but yeah I wouldn't have found any of that stuff or any, read any of that stuff had it not been for this app you got loads of stuff on it. You got thirty days a night. Um, there's loads of small press stuff. There was lock and keys on this. There's loads of stuff. Absolutely loads of stuff. Um, there's some like street hawk. But yeah, tons of stuff. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a viper. I think if I remember rightly. Um, but yeah. So that was the only two things I wanted to mention apart from the, the central stuff. Very good. The com- comic house app, well worth the money. Yeah. And same with awesome comics. Podcast. Uh, podcast oh, okay. part one comic, yeah. Very good. Yeah, nice. definitely. Excellent. There's someone based on giant haystacks by the look of it. The hay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was, a, he was a British wrestler who used to hold the, the British record for heaviest man in the country at 49 stone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Him and Kendo Nagasaki and Big Daddy. Mm-hmm, Big Daddy, yep. So easy, 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 to send us any comments or questions or just to say hello, you can reach us by email at thatcomicsmell at gmail.com. We're also available on Instagram and Twitter at thatcomicsmell. Share the podcast with your friends and followers. We're available on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes. And don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. Thanks for listening. If it shakes me, I'm forever grateful. Never let it break me. track that you're hearing today we were kindly allowed to use is called Forever Grateful. It is the title track off the Forever Grateful EP by RR the Giant. You can get RR the Giant's EP and his latest single off of Bandcamp. Double R.